Um, Halloween or Christmas? Christmas. Okay, okay. So we're gonna go in. Let's see. I'm gonna take Tank Dabber. Go in here. <laughs> Do a background. So I'm going to go in with our paint dabber. So this is Snowcat paint dabber. And I'm going to carefully apply it on my stamp, making sure that I'm only hitting the raised areas. Uh huh. Uh huh. Or not. And I'm, I'm dabbing it on because I definitely want to have enough paint on the stamp. I don't want to overdo it, but I want to at least have enough on there. All right. Once it's good, I'll kind of move it around a little bit. Then I'll take this. I'm just going to go ahead and stamp it down. Give it some good pressure, and I'm going to lift it off. Then I'll just clean my stamp-ish the way I would clean it. <laughs> And this is good enough. Yeah, it's a lot of ish on there. I just wipe off the sludge. It's good enough. It's a tool, and this is just going to be a background, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I want this to be dry, so you want to make sure that this is going to be dry. And one of the things I like about working with uh, paint, especially when it's in conjunction with ink is that it provides a really, really cool resist that is going to be pretty durable. You could add a lot of layers of color right onto whatever you stamp, whether this was Distress or Perfect Pro Mist or Stain, but we're going to do Stain because you asked. All right, so check it out. You want to make sure that this is going to be dry to the touch. So that little part that's still wet, just take off any of that excess. Sometimes you get those little kind of paint bubbles. I just want to make sure that those are gone. All right, so stain. Let's play around with this. I think there's a couple of different ways that we can work with this. I'm gonna go and we'll do some festive colors here. Mm -hmm. I have any festive colors out. Go, go, go. There we go. All right. So when you're working with stain, let me just talk to you real quick about using it on paper. If I'm going to use the Distress Stains just on tag, and I just start going in, one of the things you have to remember, if it's dry paper, it's going to absorb right away. If you want everything to be fluid, if I just wet this first, and then I went in with the stain, see how quick it just starts to blend out on its own? So you have some options when it comes to working with it. If you know you're going for intense color, by all means, just pick it up and go. If you decide, oh, I think I wanna create kind of a light background and build up, just get the paper wet first. So, either one. For this, I wanna create more of a marbled background. So I'm just gonna take my colors and put them on my craft sheet. Now I'm not going to use uh, pick a fence for this one because I've already stamped in white. So if you put the white on the white, you're not gonna see what we're gonna do. So here, I'm just gonna go in. I'm just gonna start playing around with those colors. All right. And this is only the beginning. Okay. I'm gonna go in and dry this. You need a water in I would love one, please, thanks. So did you come up with that technique after you made a mess and you were just wiping it up with your paper? Oh, no. that's kind of cool. <laughs> no. But I was using it as a paint palette. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, I'm just going to play around with some paper in here. And I like it. I mean, I like kind of how fluid everything becomes. I love the look of this technique with the stain. You may have seen uh, the resist before when I've done this with distressed pads and a blending tool and you get a really crisp resist. The stain, like I said, it's that whole fluid look that you're going to get. Now, if you want this to um, have a little bit more fun, remember, this is reactive with water. That's what we love about the stains. Thanks, Al. I'm just gonna blot it off. 
So a whole new effect just by adding that water. Is it, are you going to be putting that on a blog? Or? Yeah, it's on Scrap Time. Scrap Time. Yeah. Scrap scrap time. time. Thank you. It's also on iTunes. Sorry? And iTunes. And it's a podcast. It's a podcast. All right, so right away we've got that really cool fluid look, but we've got that image that's almost kind of ghosted because we've stamped that in paint. Now I'm going to go back, add more color, using the blending tools because I want more green but if I keep adding green with the stain I'm going to make brown because red and green make brown and I don't have to go over the whole thing just wherever I want to add a little touch of that all right we'll do a little bit around the edge it doesn't matter what colors I take out I always want more Favorite color distress. Go. The uh, faded jeans. Go. Oh, Which favorite color distress? All of them. Oh. <laughs> Winner. No. <laughs> What's your favorite color of distress? Marmalade. Oh, see, that's a good one. Mine, it does. Mine changes all the time. I'm kind of with you. Mine changes. Um, I'd say my most used color uh, would probably be pumice stone. I use that, I think, more than anything because I use it to kind of always uh, blend. But uh, my favorites, I think, uh, let's see, today, probably be frayed burlap. Today. Yesterday, I think it was old paper. But I, frayed burlap was probably one of uh, the most important colors for me with the stain because I just love it as a brown. It's such a great stain. All right, so now we've got like this nice little vintage holiday so far. You can see all those little watermarks. And if you wanted this to be more reactive, spray it with more water. It's always, always gonna react because it's a stain. So that's really the big difference. And once you start yeah. playing around with this, you're gonna see how important that was. You know, the, the ability to like put that down and automatically get that reaction, that's what's so cool about it. It's really, really different. So, back to this set, I'm gonna go in a couple other examples. There's some more. That really shows a lot of white. So that's basically showing you um, when you want to include a significant amount of picket fence. I mean, just even if you feel it, it's got this weird little chalky finish that's so different than we just use the stains. So a lot of my stamps for this release in particular, I only did nine sets for this show, but um, I did quite a few really different ones. They didn't follow a theme um, other than a little bit of seasonal. This one, don't mind me, I've cut all these up. Um, this is probably, you can see it's my most used set so far. This is the little label set. And basically the little labels, these are designed for my new vial labels that I did for Ideology to put on all the bottles. But these are really one stamp, but I designed them and you cut them all apart. So now I can cut all my number stamps apart, so I can stamp on the labels. I've got all of these I cut apart. All these words I cut apart. So you can do like Love Potion or Genuine Beach or all sorts of different things. So I really like, um, I like this set. I also did uh, Seasonal Reflections. And I'll show you some cool things to do with Reflections when we're done with this one actually. Um, mini Halloween and Christmas. But this was really it. This was about creating some silhouettes. So I did some backgrounds and some stark images because I found that when I was making fun backgrounds, any image I stamped over it, totally lost. And I just wanted that boom, solid stamp to do. These also match the embossing folders I did with uh, Sizzix Alteration. So you can basically stamp this, put it in the embossing folder, and it will emboss those words and raise them up. That's cool. I know, the samples over in the booth are really cool. So we're gonna go in with this one. Where to have our deer, and I'll also use that little snowflake. So here I'm gonna go in with some ink. Let's see. I want to see my archival pad. Here it is. I'm going to go in with archival. I'm going to use jet black archival, but really you could use any color if you want. But we have 24 new colors of archival, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to take this, give it some good pressure because we're going to stamp, and we are stamping over some textured paint even. Lift this off, dry that. I just love that. It's like simple but cool. 
They are not. Other than the new colors, but the formulation, no, it's the same formulation. Same oil-based ink that we've always had. But now we finally have it in more than just like six colors. We have it in bright colors now, so. My number one go-to ink, really. I don't think I'm gonna do the snowflake. I think I'm gonna do this. Because I like it. My most used stamp has to be. Look at that. That's pretty simple. So we're gonna go over this with a little shot of Perfect Pearl Mist. So let me clean this. There we go. Clean this. There we go. And our Perfect Pearl Mist. So this is basically uh, Perfect Pearls in a clear liquid. So the nice thing about these mists is that you can apply them to a lot of different surfaces. We do have 12 new colors of the Perfect Pearl Mist at this show. But one of the things that's important is you gotta shake this stuff up. There's a mixing ball in there. Shake it up till you don't see any sludge. And what makes this different than the other mists on the market is these don't have an ink color to them at all. It's just a color pearl. So I can put it over something I've already inked and I'm just getting that shimmer. Like this is the new biscotti, but there's cappuccino, mint. So you're getting that color shimmer instead of altering the actual color of your project. So straight over scrapbook paper. This was heirloom gold that we did. So you get that really great sparkle on there. Awesome stuff. It's like bling in a bottle. All right, so this one, just gonna mist that on. Give it a quick dry. But notice when I put this over Distress that the ink didn't like do anything crazy. And that's, that's what I found very interesting about this particular product. Because of course I was a fan of mixing in the Mini Mister, Perfect Pearls. So I'll be honest, when we first came out with this, I was like, this is Perfect Pearls for lazy people. You know, <laughs> who can't mix it in water? And then after I started playing with it a while, it's so different because it's so concentrated, like a couple of sprays. And because it doesn't have water and it's just a clear resin, like, look at that. Look at that cool little shimmer on there. I love biscotti. Oh my goodness. It's like, it's heirloom gold was my first go-to. This is totally the new go-to. Because it's like this creamy opal color. It's not, biscotti. It's really nice. It's like this, it's this cream pearl. Look at that. Oh, so Instead of white pearl, because I like the white, but it always looks silver to me, so this is more of like a vintage pearl. Yeah, it's cool. Add a little embellishment to it. You already have an idea? Everything? Yeah, what do I want, what do I want? There's a reindeer. Maybe I'll do this little bell. That'll be nice. All right. So I'm going to do a little bell. Take my little drill punch. So I'm going to punch a hole in it. It's too much stuff. Why does it with jump rings always connect? So here we go. So for this one, we're gonna take one of the new holiday adornments. These are solid back charms, so they're not hollow back. Now, you can glue it on, or because I just want it to hang a little bit, I'm gonna to need to put a hole in here. So I'm gonna use a drill punch. Drill punch is a tool that's designed to punch through metal. It's also designed to go through uh, things like Wendy's Art Parts, which is that really, really heavy board. You can also do holes through shrink plastic after you shrunk them down. So instead of trying to figure out what size hole you wanna do, do whatever, shrink it down, and drill a hole right through it, which is good. So there's two different holes, small hole, large hole. Small is for jump rings, large is for brads. So I'm just gonna undo it, put the charm in there. And just using my finger, I'm just gonna start spinning this down until it catches the metal. Whoop. Once it catches the metal, you need to kind of set it in there just to figure out where you want this to be. So let's see where I want it. Just gonna move it over a little bit. There we go. Move it back a little bit. There I go. So once it's there and I've kind of locked it in by hand, I'm gonna just swivel out the balancing guide, hold the tool with my other hand, and I'm just going to turn this. And once you feel it go through, you're just gonna unturn it until just it falls out. And basically, we've punched out that piece of metal. 
So there's no blowout in the back, and now we've created a hole in our charm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to add this little bell on there. I'm going to pin this on, and we'll have that, and we'll give it to you for another giveaway. That was good. That worked really well. So a lot of fun. I mean, I, I like the whole idea of working with these products, kind of working with them together. So there we go.